This is only the second time that anyone has ever tracked Amphuma and Siren, and it'll be the first study done in isolated wetlands. Hi, my name is Maddie Zikraff, and I'm a master's student with the University of Alabama and the Jones Center at Ichiwe. I'm first looking at sort of the population structure and density, and I do that through capture mark recapture. This is what's called a crayfish trap. It's one that we modified for our study. We added this PVC pipe so that we can anchor it into the sediment and then also this neck extension to create an air pocket for things like frogs and turtles that might end up in these traps. And the idea is that a salamander can go into one of these three funnels, but it's really hard for them to turn around and come back out. And when we set them, we also bait them with sardines just to attract the salamanders. So each salamander I catch gets an identifying number so that I can count how many salamanders I catch over a period of time and then estimate population size from those captures. And that'll give me an idea of their densities within the wetland and then also looking at how they respond to the water level changes as the wetlands dry down. And then the second part is with the telemetry, I get a closer look at their activity and then I can also estimate their home range size, so how much of the wetland an individual salamander will use. So this is a radio receiver. We use it to pick up the signal of our radio transmitters that are implanted in the salamanders. And this is what we call a Yagi antenna. And this extends that signal so that we can pick them up from farther away. And with this receiver, as I get closer to the animal, I can turn that signal down, that receiving signal, so that I can get a really accurate location on them. The two-toed amphuma and greater siren have an impact in these ecosystems as top predators. And understanding their influence in these wetlands is critical to protecting and understanding the ecosystems as a whole.